What the government then did not disclose was that these funds had been provided for by the international community, but had been siphoned by a few. Instead, the government unashamedly announced the establishment of a VIP hospital. At a time, public hospitals are collapsing due to neglect. As if that is not enough, they have committed to pay white farmers <coughs> a whooping 3.5 billion US dollars. Allow us to apologize on behalf of the generality of war veterans for the trauma inflicted on the people during past times of elections in our name of the combatants whose life had been interrupted by the war at the time at their prime age. These funds were meant to demobilize these youngsters and reintegrate them into the society. Unfortunately, these funds did not trickle down to the intended beneficiaries in full, and most of the funds were diverted into the pockets of a, of a few who had assumed the levers of authority. The rest of liberation cadres were dismissed back into their villages to fend for themselves and pick up the broken pieces of their lives on their own, while the few leaders amassed the avaricious wealth. The generality of the people watched this in awe and assumed that all war veterans were selfishly compensating themselves from the national cake while they watched from the sidelines. In the in meantime, the economy was gradually taking a tailspin due to corruption and gross mismanagement. The liberation war veterans were scattered throughout the country and watched in disbelief while the fruits of their sacrifice were being trampled upon. It was only in the late 1990s that a few of these veterans, under the leadership of the late Comrade Change Raiwood, may his soul rest in peace, they gathered their voices and demanded what genuinely belonged to them from the nationalists who were running the government resulting in the payout of the $50,000 compensation and the drafting of the statutory instruments 280 and 281 of 1997. These statutory instruments, uh, they stipulated the benefits that were due to the war veterans, including an equivalent of $2,000 then per month for life this was an acknowledgement by the government that indeed they had failed to reintegrate and rehabilitate the liberation war cadres. What the government then did not disclose was that these funds had been provided for by the international community, but had been siphoned by a few. <clears throat> Instead, the government used its monopoly on the media to propagate that the payments of these gratuities had brought, had brought, had brought the economy onto its knees. The media went into a frenzy and propagated this narrative in order to portray the war veterans as selfish and inconsiderate people who had been bent on destroying the economy. No mention is made that around the same time our army was deployed into the DRC without any budget for the venture and the effect this had on the fiscal. The media still carries this narrative each time war veterans ask for their Jews from the government in order to hide the emotions of the people against the war veterans. The, go the government has continued to shortchange the war veterans and abandon them into poverty and destitution. It is with this background that we took this matter to court to be granted what we are owed. The court ruled in our favor, but the government has not honored its obligation to us. Instead, the government has made various pronouncements to mislead people into believing that it had grand plans for the welfare of war veterans. Yet on the ground, we are getting a pittance of 16,000 other years. Contrary to the, the section 23 of the Constitution, which talks about uh, our welfare, this grand standing has to be exposed for what it really is. They should not continue to hoodwink the public by making such grand pronouncements on one hand, while behind the scenes they are fighting hard to make sure they don't honor their obligations to us as ruled by the courts. They talk about the 
uh, shares in in in, in mining corporations and and a lot of other projects that they talk about from lofty hotels hotels and so forth that's where they are not make such pronouncement yet the war veteran on the ground the war veteran on the ground is suffering in silence in the rural areas school fees for our children were not were last paid over a year ago and we are not getting our medical benefits. Yet we are at the ages when we need this most, the most. Instead, the government unashamedly announced the establishment of a VIP hospital. At a time, public hospitals are collapsing due to neglect. As if that is not enough, they have committed to pay white farmers <coughs> a whooping 3.5 billion US dollars. While they claim that they have no money to pay us. Who are these VVIPs? Who think they deserve this special favor while well, the generality of the people suffer in silence? We come to the arrest of the nine, uh, our nine colleagues, nine old veterans. While we have been following up, up on all these issues quietly behind the scenes, an official at the Ministry of Finance had assured us that there was correspondence to the other relevant ministries addressing our plight. When we asked him to favor us with a copy of such correspondence, he asked us to collect the copy on Wednesday last week, after he had sought clearance from the, his minister, Minister of Finance. But instead, when the four of our colleagues had gone to collect this copy on the Wednesday, the police had waylaid them and bundled them into a truck. Five others who were, who were waiting outside to see the contents of this letter were also bundled into the truck, and the nine were taken to Arad Central Hospital and detained there. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Arad Central uh, 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 Police Station, and detained there until they were released at midnight the following day without charge. Midnight during this curfew time. They were kept in the cells at the police station despite their ages and health conditions. I was going to show you the, the nine who were detained at the police station. And you can see the other guy was in the in, in clashes. Uh, the other one had you know they had gone to the ministry. They were not prepared for this. Uh, so things started took a change when, 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 when they were bundled by the police. There was no intervention from the government or the war veterans in the association or the party league, what they call the party war veterans league in the party, Zanubia, which is ruling, or the board, the board, uh, Liberation War Veterans Board. There was no intervention instead. But instead, Chris Mchango, who has overstayed his tenure as the chairman of the World Veterans Association, is staying, is quoted in the press as saying this was all stage managed by the MDC Alliance and what he calls G40 elements of ZANU PF. We wonder how he made such astounding allegations and we condemn this in the strongest terms. We find it utterly disgusting coming from someone who has been very quiet ever since he was imposed on us as our chairman. Maybe the burden of too many portfolios has overweighed him. We hope he will retract his statement, otherwise he should have just shut up. We have nothing to do with political battles and the factional fights in the ZANU-PF part. Our concern is our welfare. Which, are, which brings us to the Veterans of the Liberation Struggle Board. The deafening silence in all this did not come to us as a, as a surprise. They were appointed by the minister, contrary to the terms of the act, which clearly states that they should be nominated by us and recommended to the minister. Therefore, their, their allegiance is to the minister and not to us. No wonder they did not bother to intervene. 
In fact, they have not addressed us ever since they were appointed. We wonder whose interests they stand for, because they have remained silent while our fees and medical aid have not been paid. We hear from the media that His Excellency the President wishes to, to meet us to hear our grievances. <laughs> we hope this is not another grandstanding side show because we have submitted our grievances to his <coughs> office many times and we have actually met him before. Uh, he congregated us at the City Sports Center, Center and we gave him our grievances. We even wrote documents uh, of our grievances and gave him into, to his office. There's nothing new to tell him, unless, of course, you'll be coming to tell us these answers to our grievances, which he already has. He has acknowledged on numerous occasions that indeed government has abandoned us for the past 41 years. And this new dispensation is working hard to redress this by pronouncing various projects for us. We would want to inform him that what is trickling down to every war veteran is the other two years, one sixteen thousand, and nothing more. It would be a it would go a long way if he would rein in his minister of defence and war veterans, Opam Chingur, and make a withdrawal opposition to our Jews as determined by this court, by the courts. This would be the least of our expectation. We would take, want to take this opportunity to thank a lot of our, <coughs> most of our war veterans who sympathized in solidarity with our nine detained war veterans and donated from their mega salary pensions, contributed uh, some finances in solidarity with our detained comrades. And we would also want to thank our lawyers, our lawyer, Mr. Kanoti, Kanoti and Associates, who stood by us during this time when our fellow comrades were detained. Lastly, but certainly not least, allow us at this point, might be late, but better late than never, allow us to apologize on behalf of the generality of war veterans for the trauma inflicted on the people during past times of elections in our name. The truth of the matter is that a few elements within us were paid and used to terrify people in our name. We are above partisan politics as we fought to liberate every citizen regardless of their political inclination. The majority of those misguided elements who terrorized the people were not liberation war veterans. We fought together with the people and our relationship with the people was like fish and water. There's no way we could have turned against our own people. So, that narrative, the press keeps telling, uh, they keep propagating that war veterans are used to, the, to terrorize people during election time. This is far from the truth. We would want to correct that uh, perception. We thank you.